Recently, I watched a YouTube video called Why I Don't Support the Troops by Liberty Chick Live. Now, ignoring all the terrible things people said to her in the comments, a lot of soldiers and their family members were really offended. And they should be offended, but not at Liberty Chick. They should aim those feelings at the corporations doubling as the United States government. Because it's their executives that keep putting our troops in harm's way just so they can profit from our soldiers' blood. While we pay the hundreds of billions these wars cost with our tax dollars, those billions are paid directly to these corporations and government contracts. And it's their executives that are the ones deciding to start and prolong our wars, while the corporate-owned media hypnotizes the national conscience with empty justifications and slogans like freedom, serving your country, spreading democracy, and being a hero. And so year after year, they make our troops go through hell, fighting to keep themselves and each other alive, thousands of them dying, with thousands more seriously wounded. And those who make it back are so often forgotten and inadequately cared for that so far in 2011, veterans have accounted for one in every five suicides in the United States. And why do those in power keep doing this to our troops? So they can build a villa in France in which to vacation from their mansion. And no American should be more offended by this than our soldiers and their families. Because while we're paying this business's overhead with our tax dollars, they're paying it with their lives. So don't be offended at Liberty Chick for telling you the truth or the moral implications of it. Be mad at the people that lied to you so they could all the better exploit you. But they don't just lie to you. They lie to all of us. On October 27, 2007, while Obama was telling us why we should vote for him, he made the following televised campaign promise. Quote, I will promise you this, that if we have not gotten our troops out by the time I am president, it is the first thing I will do. I will get our troops home. We will bring an end to this war. You can take that to the bank. End quote. So what was one of the first things he did? In February of 2009, just two months after being sworn in, and in the midst of a debilitating recession, he asked Congress for $200 billion with which to prolong both the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, not just Afghanistan. And then two months after that, in April, he asked for an additional $83 billion to continue building the war effort. And now he issues another promise to bring home 30,000 troops from Afghanistan by the end of 2012, most of which arriving just in time for his next election. The problem is, even if we believe him this time because we know he wants to be re-elected, that still leaves 100,000 troops in Afghanistan, which is twice as many as were there when he took office. So, so much for his solemnly stated promise. It seems we couldn't take that to the bank because Obama was too busy doing that for us. He took billions of our dollars to the banks in the form of government bailouts. And these are the same banks and corporations puppeteering our government to do what most benefits their executives, not the overwhelming majority of Americans. But it's not like the present administration is lying to us any more than Bush did. Bush had his weapons of mass destruction, his mission accomplished, his preemptive attack, his they hate us for our freedoms, and plenty of other lies and empty slogans. And it's amazing how powerful slogans can be, like crying freedom even as you militarily occupy a nation. I noticed that by far the most common argument made against Liberty Chick was that it was only because of our troops over there that she's even allowed to say these things. The thing is, we had freedom of speech before these wars started, and we have no more freedom of speech than plenty of other countries that don't invade and occupy other nations. None of our aggressions since World War II have brought us any more freedom of speech than, say, Ireland, Norway, or Germany, I mean, she said she was talking about 2011, not the American revolutionaries or World War veterans. So how is it that so many people keep parroting this assumption? 
that our freedom of speech is hanging by a thread and we need to be in Iraq and Afghanistan to preserve it? Well, the answer is that if the people are brainwashed with slogans that sound good and help us to feel justified in our alleged national self-interest, no matter how empty in content those slogans are, the population will take them for granted. Like the one that tells us our soldiers are serving their country. Because they're not. Well, what they've been willing to carry out is only hurting our country. It's hurting our standing with the rest of the world, destroying our economy, separating American families, increasing contributions and enlistment to groups like Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and Hezbollah, and most poignantly, what our government has been doing in the Middle East since the 1950s via our military and Israel's is what makes our enemies hate and want to fight us in the first place. Because imagine how we would feel if Iran unsheathed some secret weapon, invaded the United States, overthrew our government, and then justified it, citing all of our perceived human rights abuses ranging from the civilians we shoot with our military to the civilians we starve with our trade embargoes. Or France, on the grounds that we still have the death penalty and that we are the only industrialized nation in the Western Hemisphere whose government doesn't provide health care to every citizen. Then imagine that after setting up a puppet government in DC, this foreign power established permanent military bases on our soil, one of which in San Antonio, right across the street from the Alamo, and plenty of others in other locations that we, for whatever reason, considered sacred. Then imagine their soldiers were constantly patrolling our cities, hunting and killing countless Americans who had organized into violent resistance groups, collaterally killing thousands of non-combatant Americans in the process, including thousands of our children. And imagine that like the American colonialists, we were subject to having our homes and persons randomly searched without any requirement of probable cause or any other constitutional guarantee of a right to privacy. All so that their corporations could increase their profits, harvest our oil, and convert our natural resources into their foreign currency. And then imagine their government never missed a chance to call those Americans fighting back terrorists. But wouldn't we call those Americans heroes? Especially if nobody was paying them, but they were just fighting for their liberty and dignity? Wouldn't we honor them the same way we do the American revolutionaries, who overcame being the underdog to repel the British forces? And wouldn't we think the soldiers occupying us both cowardly and evil if while our insurgents had to sleep in caves and under floorboards and had only primitive weapons with which to fight, they slept in impenetrably fortified military bases, fought by remote control via unmanned aircraft, had incomparably superior weapons and funding, all while we knew most of them we're only killing our people for a paycheck. We would feel exactly the same as Arabs do when they enlist in Al-Qaeda. So far from reducing what we call terrorism, what these corporations have been doing in the Middle East has been causing it. And so, for so many reasons, our troops are only harming our country by being the willing pawns through which this game is played. But the damage they do to our nation is nothing compared to what they do to the countries they destroy so they can be rebuilt as US colonies. And though the number of civilians our troops have killed in the process is incalculable, it is now many times the number that died on 9-11. No, our troops are not setting the people of other countries free by killing them and dominating them under martial law for going on a decade now. And neither are they serving our country. But they can. They can by collectively refusing to participate any further 
in these illegal and murderous occupations. This would require a sacrifice on their part, but the real heroes would prove themselves by being willing to make that sacrifice in service to their country and its protection from all enemies, both foreign and domestic. If becoming a killer for hire for a criminal organization is not a morally acceptable way to pay your bills, then neither is becoming a soldier for the U.S. government. And for those who say, I don't know what I'm talking about, since I haven't been over there, I've attached some links to just a few of the videos made by organizations like Veterans Against the War and other heroic former soldiers who have been there and are making that sacrifice. Stopping these wars and supporting our troops specifically by bringing them home is a burden that falls on all of us. But it is true that apart from becoming a medic, people have a moral obligation to avoid service in the U.S. military. And in closing, we're only okay with our tax dollars funding the killing of foreign civilians because they're not our children or our parents or our brothers and sisters. But that's the worst of the lies. Because the truth is, they are.